All right, thank you. Now, at this point, I'm going to introduce my colleague who is going to moderate the next session. He is the country director of Gridworks Development Partners. His name is Eric Olaya. Uh, please put your hands together for my colleague, Eric. Real good. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure for me to moderate this session. To kick us off in this session, I'd like to welcome the Honorable Minister, uh, Madam Ruth Nankabira, to come and give us a keynote address as she sets the scene for what we're going ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to observe protocol and ride on uh, the protocol that has been mentioned before by the previous speakers. Yeah, it is an honor and pleasure to be here today to participate in the 14th annual UK Africa Investment Forum, which is dedicated to fostering investment and trade between UK and East Africa. And on behalf of my government and myself, I'd like to appreciate the organizers who have continued to organize such fora, which brings us together, touch base with what is happening in our own countries and find opportunities of investing. I am grateful that this time round have been able to make it and this is my second time. First time I think I was with the first lady of Uganda when she was a minister of agriculture. But now I'm standing here as the minister in charge of three critical sectors. That is energy, uh, oil and gas, and then minerals. I note that this forum is intended to mobilize East Africa and Uganda in particular to identify sustainable energy solutions and investment opportunities and also underscore Uganda's commitment to renewable energy initiatives and its role in advancing regional energy security and innovation. This therefore provides yet another opportunity to identify new avenues for economic collaboration, for mutual benefit, and also come up with priorities for investment to support the development of East African countries over the medium term. In Uganda, investment in energy and mineral uh, subsectors remains uh, top on government pr priorities, as mentioned by my uh, permanent Secretary, Minister of uh, Finance, those who were here in the morning, you heard him mention the ATMs, that is agriculture, tourism, mineral development, and uh, science and technology. So energy and mineral development remains uh, on the agenda because it is the foundation of everything. Tourists would like to come in the country and find hotels supplied with renewable energy. Investors would like to come in Uganda and invest assured of affordable energy. So I'm blessed to stand here and add on the voices of those that have identified critical areas uh, for you investors to come and invest in Uganda. I will talk about the sustainable energy development programs and uh, the government policy objective on energy is to ensure adequate and reliable supply of energy to support social and economic growth. The strategic, the strategic focus is to meet energy needs of Uganda's population for social and economic development 
but also for the protection of the environment. Because some sources of energy are injurious to our environment. Uganda is abreast to that, and we have come up with legislations that support, for example, the upstream development in the oil sector to make sure that we tap the gas that could end up injuring our environment. The sustainable development requires affordable energy to make production affordable in the country. You will all appreciate that investment cannot come into the country if there is no supporting infrastructure that lower the cost of doing business. And infrastructure development like electricity generation, transmission and distribution can only be enhanced when we as government save money to invest and also attract the private sector to invest. Already the government of Uganda is making good progress in improving electricity generation transmission and supply to support industrialization as well as ensuring universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services. And in line with government policy of value addition, government of Uganda has put in place all the necessary legal and regulatory frameworks to provide a conducive environment to, to private sector participation. We therefore encourage potential investors, private sector developers, and our financial partners to give support to develop energy projects as private or under a private public partnership arrangement. On the power generation, Government targets to expand our generation capacity to 52,478 megawatts by 2040, coming from the 2,000 megawatts that we have. And we have aligned our projects from hydro, geothermal, uh, nuclear, solar and wind. And we have high hopes that by 2040, we shall have our capacity as 52,478 uh, megawatts. The key opportunities that arise from this strategy include, and not limited to, participation in public a private partnership for developing those large and small hydro plants to meet the growing demand of power. Like the minister in charge of East Africa mentioned earlier on, there are projects that we develop with our neighbors. We, de we have projects that we developed with uh, Tanzania on the southern part and, and, and Kenya and we are also working on other infrastructure like transmission lines to take us into the DRC and then transmission line to be able to trade with South Sudan coming from Oluyo substation, there's a big substation that receives power from a big generation plant, Karuma hydropower plant, which we are commissioning this month on the 17th to generate 600 megawatts with its six units. So they are, we are trying to interconnect the region so that we can be able to trade. And we are operating under the Eastern African Power Pool, which is comprised of 13 countries. The seven from East Africa, plus Egypt, Ethiopia, Somalia, Djibouti, and Sudan. Together we are 13. So we have aligned projects where we will be able to share trade in power. Already, Uganda is trading with Rwanda 
We are selling 40 megawatts, but the target is 60 megawatts. We are selling 60 megawatts to Kenya. We are selling a few megawatts to South Sudan. And we are opening up with DRC where we shall be uh, <coughs> pulling power. Into DRC, we are also working on a road. And once electricity is in place, a road is in place, insecurity will reduce. You know, when we talk about DRC, remember that we've been grappling with insecurity on that side. But with opening of the road and the electricity, I have high hopes that security challenges will be handled as well. Um, the other uh, key opportunity is an, uh, a contribution to equity in financing of power projects and participation in the engineering, procurement, and construction of the planned projects, supply of equipments as we upgrade and expand our national transmission network, uh, participating or participation in the development of promotion of the different renewable energy technologies such as small hydro power plants, geothermal, solar water heaters, solar dryers, uh, solar cookers, ETC. And I would like to thank the government of UK where we have cooperated very well in these areas. Uh, talking about expansion of transmission lines, I am happy to announce that the entire country is now connected to the national grid. Although we still have to do work for last mile connection. Western Nile was connected to the national grid on the 3rd of August. And that means West Nile being uh, bordering with the South Dan and DRC is an area which you can target for development because the market access uh, uh, is almost guaranteed with DRC and South Sudan. The region is now on the national grid. Regarding access to modern energy services, um, the energy services in Uganda is at 60% where we have 22% on the national grid and 38% off-grid. Uganda is comprised of um, 83 islands habitable. Taking power on the national grid, the islands, is not easy. But we've been working with private investors to create off-grid, mini-grids, to supply the fisher communities because fish works well with cold storage and also facilities to dry it. So this is an area where you can target to create mini grids in the so many islands that we that we have in Uganda and they are all habitable. Um, I've, I've explained that we have 22% uh, of the community's access to uh, power on the, on the national grid. And I would like to pause and thank the World Bank, where we have a facility which we are implementing, 638 million US dollars, which is going to help us on the energy access scaler program, which we have started to handle last mile connection because we need power at the lowest level possible to facilitate agriculture value addition. And we have introduced the parish development model where government is injecting money, little money into homesteads to increase their income. So we need to see power in the homes. But power has to be productively used. We encourage productive use of electricity by encouraging cottage industries, value addition, parking facilities. Five minutes left, I'm about to finish. And uh, well, as, as far as power is concerned, you are assured that even the tariff keeps on going down. We are targeting five US cents per kilowatt hour for industries. 
the large scale industries are already enjoying this, while others are being onboarded. So we would like to make power affordable to you. Talking about oil and gas, we have two areas which we are developing. Tilenga, which is developed by uh, Total Energies to produce 190,000 barrels every day of crude oil. And Kingfisher, which is developed by Sinok, it will generate 40,000 barrels of crude oil every day. So in upstream, there are areas where you can come in, especially if you want to begin on new areas, licensing areas, because we are targeting two basins, Choga Basin and Morotoka Dam. For Morotoka Dam, you can even see oil seepage on surface, on the surface. These are very, very promising areas where you can come in on speculative geo, geophysical surveys. And um, you can do joint ventures with licensees and local companies. You can do environmental services. All these will need Asia's environmental and social impact assessment. You can, this can be your entry point. Waste management and treatment can be your entry point. Power generation by independent power producers. The law was amended and you are now, you can, monopoly was removed. You can come in and generate and even transmit as a private person. And then we also opened up for net, for net metering where you can use your rooftop, generate power, utilize some, pull some on the national grid. And, and all these are areas. That is upstream, but for oil and gas, in the midstream, we have critical infrastructure. This is where we expect the refinery. We now have a, 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 a contractor where we are now clearing the crude oil supply agreement and also the project implementation agreement, almost concluded. This is an investor from uh, UAE. So they are, project, they are entry points for you to come in. This refinery will have uh, uh, residues, I, I may call them residues, for you to use. You can target fertilizer, manufacturing fertilizers from the ammonia, ammonium nitrate. That will come out of you know, the refineries. Our oil will come with associated gas, about 200,000 metric tons of gas. You can make an entry point into utilization of this gas, and so many others. While at the downstream, there are provisions of fuel waste management services to marketing companies. The development and management of bulk fuel transportation storage facilities, all those are areas. Let me touch on minerals. On minerals, we've been talking about the numerous minerals that we have, gold, copper, cobalt, lithium, rubium, nickel, tantalite, tin, wolfram, all that, phosphates, and the best on the continent. Some minerals are the best globally. Our nickel, our iron ore, the best globally. So on the mineral sector, we are trying to make sure that the mineral sector facilitates the, electri the, the electricity sector. The lithium is preserved for lithium batteries. That will facilitate the immobility that we have started. Mr. Antege asked a question in the previous session about sustainability. I didn't want to interject then because I knew I was going to present. That we are, first of all, there is a law that bans exportation of unprocessed minerals from Uganda. You can't sell our minerals as raw outside. So that will help us uh, work out a network where we shall see minerals facilitating industries if you are interested in manufacturing batteries and you have a license to mine lithium. You will not take out the lithium. You have to make sure that you collaborate with a factory which will produce the batteries. So the electric vehicles, 
that we are developing, that we have developed, will need these batteries. The electric vehicles will need chargers, charging stations. We have some charging stations which are helping the border borders, the motorcycles, because we have electric motorcycles. Those are in place. So is it, one will ask himself or herself, is it easy really to get a license in Uganda, a mining license? What I can assure you is that, first of all, we have reduced the contact, physical contact, like Kano Nakalima was talking about. You apply online. You pay for the license online. You don't have to come to me as a minister. I'll just have to sign the last paper called the license or permit. So you come and do the prospecting license first, which takes you around the country. And then when you identify an, a prospecting area, you apply for an exploration license. It takes just less than six months for as long as you have all the requirements. And it is the minister. It used to be the commissioner. You had to bench the commissioner, beg the commissioner. Now the new law puts all powers into this minister who is politically appointed. So you either deliver or you resign. So this quickens the application process, licensing process. And after that, government works with you in making sure that you settle the land owners. The minerals underneath belong to government, but the surface rights. So I am supposed to help you in convincing people to accept that where you are seated, you are sitting on gold, which does not belong to you. So let the investor pay you, and then you're resettled. And after that, then I give you the license, because we had issues where investors we are not paying for the land. And so we've catered for that. Lastly, on the artisanal miners, the law gives me permission to allocate ring fence areas for artisanal miners, not to chase them away from the business. And the entry point here is for whoever who would wish to work with the artisanal miners, you know their challenges. They don't have modern uh, 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 value addition facilities, you know, uh, the washing centers and all that. And most of them are still using cyanide, mercury, which is dangerous to their lives. So this is an entry point if, if you can think about it to come and see how you can work with the artisanal miners. We have ring fenced areas for them. We are giving them licenses. I could go on and on and talk about the opportunities in my area. Electricity, generation, transmission, distribution, very wide. Oil and gas, very wide. And then minerals, also very wide. You are most welcome to come and partner with us. I will be here till tomorrow. If you want a one-on-one -on -one with me, I stay in this hotel, I will work throughout the evening, not throughout the night, <laughs> but throughout the evening, <laughs> throughout the evening. Thank you so much for listening to me. Karibu, you are most welcome to come to Uganda. Thank you very much.